And welcome back. Yes, as part of my ESP32 web radio, I'm investigating different screens. Uh, this one here and this one here, sort of. This was sort of more a reference, really. Um, but as you can see, there's an awful lot of wires. Even if we take this SD card thing away, there's still an awful lot of wires there for something that's running on SPI. And, well, yeah, don't get me started about that SD card. <laughs> Partly because I can't even get the thing to work, even though it's supposed to be SPI as well. And let's face it, look at the size of it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got a, a mini one somewhere. Yeah, so what I've been doing is investigating um, how I'm going to drive the actual screen for, as part of my ESP32 web radio project. And indeed, which project it is I'm actually going to follow. So I dug this screen out, and it was an ILI 9341, I believe. Yes, 9341. I thought, hello. I've seen this one somewhere before. Yes, it was this one down here, wasn't it, from a long, long time ago. And for those of you who have watched my older videos, or perhaps were even following my channel at that time, this was um, quite exciting for me, really. The fact that I could get this screen working, the driver worked using the Adafruit GFX library and whatnot, and yeah, it's all touch. If I touch that OK button, there we are, starts again. So, what's wrong with this one here compared to that one there? Well, they're both the same screen, but the one at the back is running on SPI. So, three wires, three, can you see those? Plus one more for the CS chip select wire, so yeah, four really. Unfortunately, there's also the touch screen part of this, yeah, exactly the same as this one here. So that's these little loops here, plus another CS pin. And you've got on the back of this a whopping great big SD card reader, about like this one here. And that requires wires from the SPI bus, plus a CS uh, wire as well. And they would normally go over this side here, uh, which I've not soldered in, because I thought I'm not using a whopping great SD card like this. Not least because this SD card sticks out the bottom of the screen down here. So if I wanted to put this into a nice neat case, it would prevent me from doing so. And, of course, given that video we saw, that one, yeah. If you think I'm using an SD card when we have little FS or spiffs available to us, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. Okay, so although this is showing some pictures mostly okay they're gifs bmps and jpeg but the jpeg one doesn't display properly and i don't know why and do you know what i'm, I'm not not really too bothered at this stage because i don't know if i'll be displaying any jpegs see that's a bitmap upside down that's the jpeg there and it didn't display at all or just a little tiny fraction of it something dodgy going on there so maybe it's the underlying library or something i don't know as i say i'm just not worrying about it too much um, however, we are using an ESP32, obviously, because all the internet radios these days use that. You'd be hard pushed to get it to work with an ESP8266, you know, speed wise and everything. And forget it for an Arduino. Now, this screen, which is the same screen as that one there, effectively, just configured differently as um, a shield. Yeah. Now, the lighting's all a bit rough and ready here because I'm trying to point the camera down so you can see what's going on but I'm going to readjust this and we'll talk more about this screen and why it's absolutely no good for well a lot of things really and then talk a bit more about the one at the back and well SD card versus little fs again I guess now I want to give a quick shout out to JLC PCB. Now they've supplied many, many PCBs to me over the last two, three years. And uh, yeah, it's all very well for me to stand here and go, look, go and use JLC PCB. But let me give you an actual practical example of the sort of thing they can produce, shall we? And then I want to have a very quick word about shipping. Right, I've just had the PCB delivered. So as you can see, it's, um, it's not a complex board, but it is a, a, a bitty board, isn't it? Lots of pieces on it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's done wonderfully well. Now, I've, I made this using Easy EDA, which, as you know, is part of that group, JLCPCB, LCSC.com, for the components, and Easy EDA. Now, within Easy EDA, you can do a lot of things that you would never expect to do otherwise. For example, if you've noticed here, I've actually removed both the copper and the solder mask from that hole, because that's going to have a push button in there. 
And uh, I thought, no, I don't really want this sort of ground plane, which is what this is at the back here, going over this hole. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be connected. So I just drew it out and um, said, don't put any copper here and don't put any solder mask there either. So it's just back down to the bare PCB here, which is exactly the way I wanted it. So the shipping options to the United Kingdom, at least, as you can see, there's quite a few here. Now, the DHL, um, which is what I use or have always used more or less, um, is obviously the quickest. You'll get it within three, four days. And in fact, DHL even tell you, oh, this will take a week, will be by the end of the day and a week's time. And then they send you another, oh, no, it's coming today, actually. So, yeah. Now, this this bit here, DDP, that's duty and customs paid at the point of um, sending it out. So you pay a bit more up front, but then you don't get charged any duty, import duty, VAT, or anything else. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind, and you've got to weigh up the risk there of that happening. But if you look right down the bottom of this list, look, there's a GB special air mail, Royal Mail. It's only $5.35. Now, I tried that out, I don't know, two, three months ago, and it was just absolutely fine. It says 10 to 15 business days, and it was about two weeks, actually, when I got it. So if you're looking for a cheaper option, try that out. And don't forget the special assembly offer they have. If we look here for the SMT assembly option, you'll see you can get a coupon that takes the $7 off for the setup fee and everything else. Why don't you try them out now? So I went to the internet, as we all do, I found a really simple demo sketch, this one here in fact. I'll put the, um, the URL in the video description below, but basically it's a pretty small little thing and it's step by step, you know, how to put this board on, you can see pictures of it and connectivity and everything else, right? even tells you what all the pins are for. Uh, but basically, I put this sketch onto my um, IDE, which looks like this. Now, the thing that happened is, when I ran the sketch, all I got was the white screen of death, even on this one. But what did come up in the serial monitor, it says here, if you're using the Arduino Shield, the line Define Use Adafruit Shield pinout should be uncommented it should appear right so in the adafruit library i had a look and it was uncommented out so i thought well hmm you know what's the alternative so i commented the line out even though it says don't do that it shouldn't be that way what happened it all sprang into life so i'm guessing that because this isn't a proper adafruit shield it's it's a clone isn't it it probably doesn't have one of the pins connected to say it is an Adafruit one. Um, that didn't work. So if you buy this particular combination, do look at that library, look at that code comment and try it both ways. Go to the library and comment that line out. What's that? You want to see in the library where that is. Okay. Right, so the library we're looking for then, it's the TFT LCD library, that one over there on the left, and it's the header file, that one there. And as you can see in this line here, that's the bit that um, should be enabled if you've got a true Adafruit shield. Um, but as I haven't, I just commented that line out so this thing was not defined and it all sprang into life. So it's more like a breakout board than a shield. Just a little caveat if anybody else gets stuck, that might help you. OK, well, that's enough of that um, Uno based one. Let's put that to one side and think about um, this one here. Yeah, it's supposed to, this particular demo sketch was supposed to just show a few um, pictures, as we can see there, using an SD card, but I connected all this up, um, checked the wiring 16 times, and it still didn't work. So I thought, you know what, I'm not going to use this anyway. Yeah, after, after half an hour of trying to get this to work, and it didn't, I'm thinking, why am I battling against it? Let's just forget SD and do, practice what I preach. Let's have a look at the code. Right, this is the, the sketch that you're seeing running on that uh, workbench. And as you can see, yes, I've included the little FS header as shown in that previous video. So I thought, forget SD, we can use it almost exactly the same. Wherever you've put SD in the past, you now just put little FS. So within this sketch in the setup, as you can see here, I'm uh, loading up the little FS file system. And I'm saying false in there, so do not initialize everything. And it just then, instead of using SD dot, we just use little fs. We can we can use it everywhere that it was being used before. So in here, in this TFT draw stuff, instead of SD in there, we put little fs, and it just 
worked as normal. It's a stream of data after all. So that's that was pretty simple. In the actual directory, in the Arduino IDE then, in the data directory, in the sketch, let's have a look at that. So in my sketches folder, there's, there's my Arduino sketches folder. It's just on this drive here. So I've got a folder called ESP32 SD card test, same as the Eno file. There's the sketch. There's the data file that we mentioned in that previous video about little fs. Uh, we expand that. There's all the images and so forth that are being displayed. And if we select all those, look, they come to a total of 962 KB, so less than a meg. And I don't think I'll be using that many GIFs and BMPs and all that in the internet radio thing. But anyway, uh, it just goes to show you can get some stuff up into that that sort of spiffs little fs partition on the ESP32, no trouble at all. So practicing what I preach in that sense. So as a first step towards the internet radio project that I'll be building, um, this could be the screen I'll be using. It's certainly one that is supported by the GitHub repository that I'm using. Perhaps it's time we looked at that and then have a look where you can buy this sort of stuff. They're pretty cheap actually, I must admit I was pleasantly surprised. So this is the GitHub repository for the the um, project that I'll be following. As you can see, it's called an ESP32 mini web radio. Now, there was a more fully featured version than this, but I thought, you know, all I want is a mini web radio. In fact, I've moved away now from the idea of having a speaker and a portable device, because in fact, what I want it is in my workshop here. Although I can use internet radio from the PC, it's very awkward to do that because I can't mute things independently. So what I'm going to do is build this unit that you see here in a self-contained box just with line out. And line out can then feed into my mixer and valve amplifier that you've previously seen. And um, it means I'll have an independent control of the music when it's playing in here. Now, the guy who does this, I say guy, I'm assuming, you know, he's um, it's here, Schreibfall. Um, and he, he does a couple of um, different internet radio things and he's got driver for that particular screen in fact if we look at the github here's the schematic for it and he shows a slightly different screen here uh, the esp32 here's the um, decoder mp3 i don't know if it's mp3 or i squared s actually um, i haven't looked that far this screen isn't exactly the same but it's certainly spi driven and his project supports that so i thought well you know it's simple enough i'll do it he's even got would you believe a whole video showing how it works here we are look esp32 radio um if i just play a little bit of that it actually shows some of the controls on there there we are look and i think yeah do you know that would do certainly initially right and it's all touch screen as you saw there he was touching the the arrows here there he goes again look to the next station and the volume and all that can be adjusted as well so i think do you know what that that is something that i'm going to seriously look at hence looking at this screen and getting the esp32 up and running with that so yeah that looks pretty good and it looks pretty responsive as he's sort of you know changing things it's looking pretty good so standing on the shoulders of giants as it were i'm going to try and get this working no reason why it shouldn't work whether i use the screen on the workbench now or change to another screen I'm not yet sure but uh, well at least I know that all this works and the ESP32 bit all links together okay let's have a look how much these screens actually cost then if you were thinking of doing the same and indeed the ESP32 module that's a dev module I've got there there are lots of ones out there called dev module or dev board just make sure you get one with the most amount of pins you can on it so on Banggood, I just typed in ESP32 development board up here. And of course, it brought up this whole big long list of stuff. Um, last time, I think I showed you one for about five or six dollars. So it's probably something like this one here. I don't know what the difference between this and this is, apart from price. Um, yeah, just check that the pins are down the side. You've got enough because some of them are pretty small. And if any of you have ever used one of those ESP... 8266-01 devices you know that that only exposes like three or four pins just to control a relay you don't want the same problem with an esp32 where you haven't got enough pins to connect up to so yeah check those out 
Now this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Here we see two ESP32 devices, one with 38 pins and one with 30 pins. Now I'm not saying you couldn't build an internet radio with a 30 pin device there, but um, from what I've read it's always best to have too many pins. So go for the 38 pin and then you won't lose out. Okay, And there's something else you need to be aware of as well. There are two distinct versions of the ESP32. The one on the left is a D and the one on the right is a U. And if you notice the D has the antenna already built onto the board but the U has that little tiny socket and it's designed for an external aerial that you just snap on there. Now whilst you might get a better range with the one on the right remember that you can't use it just as is. So in some ways the one on the left if you've got a good Wi-Fi signal is plenty good enough. All right, Just be aware of that loads there as i say i shouldn't think you need to spend more than about five or six dollars though and i don't know why this one's more expensive could just be the brand who knows let's have a look at the screens then so this is uh, the results for ili 9341 um, i've got a 2.4 inch screen i think that is it might be 2.8 can't tell it's upside down um, so it might be this one let's have a look at this one first shall we Yes, indeed. This is the one that I've got then. So it's $6.66. Oh dear, there's a number, isn't it? Uh, if you get it from China. Um, but it does ship from the USA and the UK, obviously at higher prices. Let's see how much it is from the UK first. This is, in fact, the exact same screen that I got. So from the UK, it is $10.99, but free shipping and you get it within the week. So, yeah, you have to think about that. From the USA, it costs... Oh, $10.99 as well. And uh, oh, you have to pay shipping. Oh, to United Kingdom. Well, obviously, I don't want it shipped here from the USA when I can order it from the UK. So $10.99 then, I'd imagine that would be, well, it might be free shipping in the United States. Depends where you live, I suppose, doesn't it? Which state or whatever. But I think for the price, or, you know, you can always ship it from China and wait a bit. Was there shipping on that one? Let's just go back and have another look. Oh, $2 shipping. So that actually brings it to 8 71 doesn't it so not a huge amount in it and it whilst this says to the united kingdom eight to ten business days and, and they are pretty quick now again they've improved their service since the um covid19 shut all the airlines down um it still does take a little while compared to the two or three days that i find if you order it directly from the uk so if you look underneath so as you can see here i'll just expand that look all those um pins down the side there's a lot of them but all SPI. Imagine how it would be if we didn't have SPI. So yeah, that's the one I'm using. That's not bad, is it, really, to make an internet radio out of. So if you're thinking, you know, 5 or $6 for the ESP32, 6 to $10 for the screen, you do need that. It's either an MP3 decoder or I2S decoder, not sure yet, but that's probably another 4 or $5.00. That's, that's roughly it for a line out if you need an amplifier and speakers that'll cost you more but we'll we'll see about those in a future video when i've got it all up and running we can dissect it a little bit at our pleasure so it's not difficult this if i can get these screens up and running i guess anyone can and yet yeah, do not do not use no, let's chuck that away we're, we're not going to use sd cards we'll stick to little fs as long as there's room in that three meg fingers crossed we'll see how it goes okay that's all for this week because it's um you know an intermediate stage of this project the very first stages of getting things working so i'd um i'd appreciate your comments down below any experiences you've had on internet radios and screens and stuff and whatnot always good to hear there's so much information out there and you guys have got a lot of experience in certain things that's always good to share that and other readers will come in and uh, see that and go oh yeah i didn't know this and off they go away as well great stuff okay there are probably some affiliate links down below which help support my channel that'd be good but whatever whichever way you choose to buy stuff or not i'll see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching